Sergio Perez's place at Red Bull is under renewed pressure, thanks to comments made by pundits and members of the Red Bull team. The team obviously wants someone in that seat who can push Max and get the most out of the car, something Checo has been unable to do this season. Despite Daniel Ricciardo's return, there is another driver who has been impressing them far more. Is Lando Norris on the way to Red Bull? Or can McLaren provide him with a car that can battle for race wins? Let's check it out. Sergio Perez has had a pretty inconsistent season so far. Things started really well with two wins from four races, but at the Miami Grand Prix, he lost a race win to Verstappen despite the Dutchman starting ninth on the grid. Then he had a nightmare in Monaco, and just like that, his chance at fighting for the Drivers' Championship was gone. It completely shot his confidence. He started a regularly missed Q3, struggled for podium finishes, and looked well short of Max on track. While that hasn't been too much of an issue this season thanks to Max's 12 wins in 14 races, you always want to have the best drivers possible in your car. If another team were to make a leap in performance all of a sudden, to the point where they could challenge Max, Sergio would be completely out of that fight. Although Perez has a contract in place for 2024, the driver has had to deal with comments from Helmut Marco, saying that doesn't mean he'll race for the team. From nothing is 100% in Formula 1 to calling the Mexican driver's deal a contractual guarantee and not a job one. The Red Bull Motorsport advisor has continued to pile pressure on Perez. It didn't stop even after his podium result at the Italian Grand Prix. Perez is not consistent, he's not always focused, the Red Bull Motorsport advisor told Service TV. And it seems the only reason Perez may retain his Red Bull seat next season is because the team's apparent target, Norris, is not available. Perez has a contract until 2024, and Norris has a contract until 2025, unfortunately. It's that long, he said. He is definitely a candidate for us. At Toro Rosso, we had already reached an agreement with him at the time, until his manager realized there was an option for a McLaren contract. In terms of youth and speed, he would suit us very well. Sergio, on the other hand, is already over 30 and is expecting his fourth child. So he also has other interests, so you have to see what happens next. Helmet is apparently counting the days until he can get Lando in, according to the user Big Woha on Reddit. Marco has never been a big fan of the Mexican driver. Checo had an excellent season in 2021. In 2022, he did okay, picking up big points in most races and helping the team secure the Constructors' Championship. The problem is that he's just never been anywhere near Max. Checo isn't a bad driver, he just isn't good enough for Red Bull apparently. Should Red Bull opt not to honor Perez's contract next season or not re-sign him after 2024, they'd need a stopgap between the Mexican driver and Norris as McLaren CEO Zach Brown has made it crystal clear he's not letting the driver leave before 2025. Asked if McLaren would reject offers to release Norris, Brown said, Correct. Lando will be racing at McLaren through to 2025. Absolutely. Despite what Zach says though, the rumors about Lando moving to Red Bull are only getting louder. The 2016 F1 champion Nico Rosberg made the claim that Norris may not be sticking around with his current team until the end of 2025, stating during the Sky coverage of the Monza weekend, Where's he going? Next year already, I hear there's a switch coming. This statement from Rosberg put the cat among the pigeons. If Lando were going to move next year, it would only be to a top team. Red Bull and Mercedes are probably the only teams he would consider moving to, and with the Mercedes lineup locked in for two more years, Red Bull is his only option. And how Lando and Max have been talking about each other in recent interviews is only adding to the rumors. Ahead of the Italian Grand Prix, Norris admitted that he would be open to teaming up with his close friend Max Verstappen at some point. It's definitely something I'll be open to in the future, Norris said. After calling Max one of the best drivers in the history of the sport, he finished, It'd be great to work alongside someone like that, and at the same time, see where I can really stand against him. I'd be open to it. I invited him to McLaren the other day, so if he wants to come anytime, he's very welcome. Having read through the comments on our recent video covering the McLaren team, I now know there are a decent number of you that aren't Lando fans. Despite that, he is very highly rated in the paddock, and Red Bull are apparently desperate to get him on their team. So did Mercedes make a mistake with how they sorted their new contracts with their two drivers? Over the Italian Grand Prix weekend, Mercedes announced that George Russell and Lewis Hamilton would be continuing with the team until the end of 2025. While this might seem like a good move on the surface, Martin Brundle has pointed out a huge problem with their decision. The Sky F1 commentator said it was unusual that an F1 team didn't offset the contract end dates of its drivers, given they both may choose to leave at the same time, which causes any team a headache. 
XF1 Grand Prix winner Johnny Herbert also said he believed Mercedes may live to regret their double two-year contract awards. I'd probably try and wiggle a way of making Lando ready because I see him as one of the better drivers that we've got that is probably going to be one of the available ones. That's who I think I'd be trying to aim for. While Lando is currently contracted for the same length of time as George and Lewis, the Daniel Ricciardo situation last season has shown how brittle Formula 1 contracts can be. If Red Bull decide to pull the trigger and go for Lando to replace Checo in 2025, they'll only have to buy out Lando's contract from McLaren. Without seeing the contract, we don't know how easy that actually is. It will definitely be easier and cheaper than it would be for Mercedes though, who would have to cut ties with one of their two drivers, buying them out of the remaining year of their contract at an expense in the tens of millions of dollars. For the time being, McLaren will be doing everything they can to convince Lando to stay, despite Helmut Marko obviously trying to engineer a move for him in the near future. The best way to get Lando to stay would be to give him a car that can compete for race wins and world championships, something that McLaren have been doing a good job of recently, despite the evidence of the Italian Grand Prix. The Belgian Grand Prix exposed the weakness of the MCL60 at high-speed tracks, and Norris found himself unable to defend in the race on his way to 7th place. At Monza, Norris qualified 9th and finished 8th, having been stuck behind the Williams of Alex Albon for most of the race. Both are very similar tracks, requiring a low-drag setup which McLaren are yet to work out. McLaren were podium contenders at Zandvoort until a number of strategy mistakes during an incredibly complex race left them towards the back of the points. Although the final outcome at Monza was actually a place lower than at Spa, Norris felt that the car was more competitive overall and that he could at least fight with other drivers. It was P8, some points, and maybe we were hoping for a touch more, but also at times we were expecting not to even be in the points. So I'm happy with it. I think it was damage limitation. But we made some good improvements and it was a raceable car, which is a good step forward. And there's only one more low downforce track this season, in Las Vegas. McLaren showed at Silverstone and the Hungaro ring that they can be competitive at the front of the field. Lando's two second places were convincing and it is clear that the MCL60 does have some speed, it just needs to be on the right track for now. There is plenty of time to improve the car this season and with the regulation staying the same for next year, McLaren will be doing everything they can to get the most out of the car right now. Now that they have moved into their brand new wind tunnel, development for the team should be far easier and cheaper. This means more upgrades, coming quicker to the car, and hopefully more podiums for Lando. Do you think Red Bull could buy Norris out of his McLaren contract? And have Mercedes left themselves in an awkward situation with both their drivers being out of contract at the same time? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.